Hi, my name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. Today I'm going to show you a fun fall card. And we are going to use the Stampin' Up! Come Together Suite. We're going to use a lot of the pieces from it, actually. We're going to use um, the stamp set, the dies, some of the paper, and a little bit of the ribbon. Um, I thought about trying to get one of the little wood embellishments on it, but I left it off. Um, it's a really fun suite. It's fun to color. The dies are really fun. And the, the dies will do some imprints. But the way I ended up using them today, I didn't use that aspect of it. But I will. So come back and watch another one of my tutorials later because I do like those. And I will use them. I already do have one card. It, it may have been the second card that I did when I first got stuff from this catalog. And, and I will link that together. Um, so let's just get started. It's Saturday and I have lots of things I want to do. I like to stamp on Saturdays too, but I have, you know, some of the cleaning and cooking and stuff, some of the stuff that we, us girls have to get done on Saturdays as well. So I'm going to stamp with the big leaf stamp. And this is shimmer white paper and you do have to either use shimmer white for this technique or you're going to have to use watercolor cardstock. And this is our Versamark pad, which is clear. Obviously, I was going to say obviously you can see where I stamped, but you can't see where I stamped. It stamps clear. So I need two leaves. And then there are two pumpkin stamps. One of the pumpkin stamps actually has two pumpkins. So we'll end up with three pumpkins. And I just mounted them at the same on the same block. So stamp these down here. And then with this stamp pad, it's sticky so you can emboss with it. And I resisted the urge to use copper because I've done a lot of copper recently. I'm done with that. This will be a camp card. If you're an indie and you would like to come this week, it's on Friday or Saturday, Friday night, Saturday morning. And it is one of the cards that will make it camp. So there's my pumpkins. And it's kind of like magic. You go from nothing to something. And this paper itself is pretty too because it's sh the shimmery white. It's my favorite paper of our normal cardstock that's just always available. And then you need to heat it. Get this out of the way. And this is just our, um, it's our miniature version of grid paper. It's actually designed to be in the Stamparatus. I like this size. We have, you know, the giant size, um, which a lot of people think just demonstrators can get, but it is in the catalog. But I like this little size. It's perfect for being on the table like this. Okay, so let's heat this up. I'll move it up where you can see it. You want it to go from dusty to shiny. Once it gets going. There you go. See how pretty it looks? So it goes from dull to shiny. And it works best, I think, if you just hold it in one spot and as it goes shiny, then just move it. Otherwise, you might miss a spot. I see a lot of people wave it all over, but then that's not the most effective way to get it done. And just kind of angle it in the light, and it's really easy then to see the dusty and the shiny. Once the gun gets hot, it goes really fast. You don't want to do it longer than necessary. If you do it too long, then it goes flat and you want it nice and raised up. So it's a nice embossed image. And then once you think you've got it all, just kind of move it in the light. And if you have any dusty spots, you'll notice it. Some of the colors are easier than others. The metallics, for the most part, are really easy to tell. Then you want this to be cool, which if I wasn't filming, I would set it aside for just a second. But since I'm filming, it might smash just a tiny bit. Oh, it's it's pretty cool. Um, so now I'm going to send it through the die cut machine. So I'm going to put the leaf on. I'll do one leaf first. You can do the pumpkins all in one pass, but since I have the leaf. And it just takes one pass through. And you don't want to do more than one pass with this because 
um, it does have that nice raised embossing. And if you go a whole bunch of passes, then every time all you're doing is smashing um, more of the embossing down. And you want it to be nice and raised up like that. And one cut, one pass cuts fine, so there's no scent. There's just a waste of time to keep going back and forth. And the other thing is, um, a lot of times with these ones that are just outlines, it's just a habit. People think, oh, I want to make sure that I've got it cut. So I'm just going to do it two or three times. Um, but you noticed that when I ran this through, this lifted up out of the paper. So if you do it two or three times, sometimes the die actually lifts up and it squishes over a little bit. So it's actually worse um, to go more than once because it can move a little bit. And once it moves and it recuts, then it can either double cut or it moves just a fraction and it shaves a little bit off of the place where it cut the first time. Watch when I go through. And you're going to see how this kind of pops up. And see if you go back through, see how that's dropped down and moved? See, it's, those are all in different spots now. So if you move and go back through, they could squish over just a little bit. And they're all, they're cut fine. So you don't need to waste your time. You, and it also cuts your plates. And the more cuts in your plate, the um, less effective they become. I'm not sure there's my leaf tie. I'm trying to find my leaf tie. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to paint these. And we're going to use one of my favorite methods of painting. And it's, um, gradually I'm going to end up with all of the colors in this way. But I have um, ink refills and I put them in my aqua painters. And then every time I go to use them, because I have not, um, at first I had written on them and over time it erases. So I need a better a more effective way to label the colors. So every time I go to use them, actually I have my hands dirty because I wasn't paying attention and I flicked the lid off and the first one was um, terracotta and it got all over me. So, you know, I have a little bit of terracotta tinge today. So these are just, um, I put maybe 12 drops of refill and then I fill the cartridge of my aqua painter with water and then I just leave them. That's why you have to use, um, shimmer cardstock or um this yeah this looks like it's this is terracotta or you have to use watercolor cardstock because the amount of water that we're going to end up putting on these it would cause vanilla or whisper white to pill and you don't want to pill your cardstock so just kind of brush over and then we're going to let this dry so you can see that's what happened to me because it when they sit i keep them stored like this um, and sometimes it just drips a little bit down in there. And when I flung that off, I got it on me. Just be careful when you take the tips off. I was kind of talking to my husband and I wasn't paying attention. So here's some pumpkin. And then some pumpkin on my pumpkins. Just kind of fill the rest of that in. And you can overlap. And then I have peacock. And then I have olive. I'm not staying in the lines. I'm not staying. These leaves have like sections. I'm not staying in those. I'm just adding color to wherever. I'm going to let this coat dry. And then I'm going to go back and add another little bit. So I'll set those aside to let those dry a second. We'll move on to the rest of our card. So this is terracotta we're going to use for our card base. And then this is a piece of the designer series paper that comes in the come together. Um, and I really liked this side and it was kind of why I used the peacock, but then when it was all said and done, it was too busy. <laughs> so I liked the other side too. So that's what we're going with. Um, let's stamp it first. So you do want to put your greeting on here. And what I did was I laid my big pumpkin here. And put your greeting on first. I'm going to stamp it in a pretty peacock that pulls it back into the paper since I wasn't using the, the side that had the peacock. So just about here. And it's a season of thanks. There's a couple of different greetings in the set. 
and then this is um, Cajun Craze, which is not in our leaves, um, and it's not in the paper. But it is Cajun Craze is really a darker um, color of terracotta tile, so it looks really pretty on here. And first, I'm going to kind of just add some splatters, and to get more um, effective splatters, so it doesn't look like you've done this little triangle thing every time, just press kind of like on different parts of your stamp. Like here you can see I just got a little bit, this I got a little bit, this I got more of the whole thing. And just kind of till your ink comes off. And I did that twice. See there, I'm, I'm not pressing all the way down. So I'm not getting all of the, the pattern. And then as it comes off, you can kind of get more of it. I just didn't, you don't want whole giant little triangles on here. And now that I've got some on here, I don't want all of my dark things in the same spot. So just kind of fill it up. And you don't want the whole thing covered either. And so then over on my card front, I'm going to do it just around the edges because that's all you're going to see. Let's just add some dots around my edges. It just makes your card not look flat. And this one, this time you can do more of the same image of the stamp because you're just going to see edges of it. And I'm not going until it goes all the way off because then it's kind of light on this. Um, but maybe like three times. And so you can see the Cajun Craze on the terracotta. It's a nice dark color on it. So it makes a nice, it keeps your card from looking flat. So here you can kind of see that. So let's go back over to our leaves and we'll give some of them a different, a little bit more of a coat. So here I'm just going to hit a couple of the places again. And again, I'm not going totally over any of them. Some of where I've got one color now, I'm just hitting it again. Or if there's some empty spots, I'm going to do it one more time. So three times total. And this looks like you've done some shading work, but I'm doing the cheat version of it because, and again, overlap some of your like blues and greens and some of your oranges. So I don't have much of the green in the middle of these. So let's add a little section of that. And now you can see where my terracotta was kind of drying light. And kind of darken it up. But I do want some of them to stay light. And you're really going to notice it on the pumpkins when I do a little bit of the shading. Because here's a before pumpkin. Show you an after pumpkin because I do have one more set over here. I don't know, I never finished those. I've only finished them on my finished card. So, again, you don't want all of it. And let this kind of seep into the other colors. You can see right here where you're adding the second coat how it's already getting a little darker. And then I'll go over some of the other colors. Let's hit there so we get pumpkin on top of everything. Pumpkin spiced every color. Let's get this here. Since it being a really rich, a rich color of fall card. Okay, let's go back to this while this is drying. I'm going to take my bone folder, and I did want some of this paper to show because look how pretty that is. You know, and a lot of times with our paper, it would be nice to see two colors, and with this card because it's kind of rustic, 
we're gonna be able to get, any, oh, get away with kind of tearing up the edges. So just take your bone folder. You don't wanna tear it. If it tears, it's not the end of the world. But I really don't want it to be torn. That's why I'm not using my snips. But I'm just gonna kind of bend the edges over with this first. Just kind of break the fibers down with the edge of my bone folder. And you wanna do it um, front side up. If you do it the other way, then all you're gonna do is fold more of this backwards. And then you're not gonna get any of the peacock coming forwards because you're gonna be folding this backwards. So you can see I'm just kind of pressing it, pressing it forwards. Whenever I do this, my hands are so um, terracotta tile and it's turning peach onto my hands. After I get a little bit of work done though, it's we're having a beautiful um, warm September here and it's been in the 90s and the, today it's in the 80s. It's gonna be continue to be in the 80s all week. So um, I'm going to go out and hit the pool in a minute. That'll take care of um, this loveliness that's all the full colors that's now on my hands. So next week at camp, this won't be the first card I let anybody do because, you know, nothing's worse than coming to camp and having your hands be dirty on the first card. Okay, so now those are all just kind of broken up. So here's the trick to make this work the best way. Go ahead and put it on your card. I'm going to try to get right up to those corners. This is the world's worst snail. I feel like I'm working with a fuse. For whatever reason, it doesn't always roll. And I put a little bit more than I might sometimes of snail because I'm gonna get this right over to here. And then come back to this. I wanted to be able to kind of work this again with my bone folder. And now that it's stuck on here, like you've got a little bit more that will hold it. And just kind of bend it. Again, I'm trying not to tear it. If it does tear, you know, sometimes when you do it with your snips, you get a big rip, and that's okay, because I'm going for that. This, I didn't really want to rip. You see right here? You get that so it holds close to the edge. You don't have to have, like, the whole thing do it. Just enough. Now you can kind of see that I'm pulling that um, peacock into it. Just a little bit on every side. Let's get a little bit more feet and snail right there. And sometimes like if you fold, fold it back, then you can kind of work it back over. There we go. Now we have a little bit of a hint of peacock. Like we don't want it all the same depth or anything. But there we go. So let's now add these. And I am going to add one more coat of color, but I kind of want it to be on here to see where I want the colors to fall. So this was first, because that's where we based our stamping. And then I'm going to grab some dimensionals, a lovely new package of them. It's always fun to take that first one off. So then we're going to add this. They can go right over the top so it looks like they're sitting in front of each other. Then I have, this is the um, ribbon from the Come Together Suite, and it's the cord. It's a double set of ribbons, so you get a fat one and then the cord. I'm just going to use the cord for this. So just cut a little thing and then kind of double it. And then take whichever leaf you kind of like the best. I like this one. And then up around the stem. The stem cuts pretty low. Just tie a knot, and I did it twice, so just tie a knot twice so it doesn't come untied. There we go. And then again, this one's going to go under, and just angle it so you're not covering up your words. It gives a nice little curl to it because of the um, water, and again, on the watercolor cardstock, it wouldn't curl quite as much if you tried on Whisper White or... Um, Vanilla, unless you're super duper careful, it's probably going to not look nice at this point. 
you can try it and you can try to be careful with the water but it just starts to pill um, and it makes the cardstock look really dull this looks beautiful and shiny so then you just kind of aim these however you want whatever looks good these are aimed a little bit different I think than my original card and snip that one that has that across Okay, and then let's do one more coat of this and then we'll add our embellishments. So this looks like it is every single time. I'm like, is this the pumpkin or it's is this the terracotta? So don't do it to every spot. Just go back and hit a couple of the ones and you'll have one more layer of darkness. And you don't want to hit every one of them. This time it's just, that's why we're doing it when it's layered because you're covering up some so you don't need to cover the whole thing just get some of the ones that are showing there we go and this must be my pumpkin and don't get the ones that you've left light at this point because you want those to stay light so get ones where you've already made them dark So much fun to do this especially for those of us that like to paint and I have had um, I did a set of green I did five green aqua painters back in April and this is one of the original ones this, this is one um, this is my olive and they've all had um, ink in them since then and they've been fine So you don't have to clean them out just leave them in there but you do want to make sure that you use them a lot because you know it's it's a little bit of an investment but you will find that you use them a lot and i will make the little link on there um to show you some other ways to use them because there's more to do than just paint with them okay and then this is my peacock and then one more way to draw to get the peacock in here is you're going to take your one more time, I'm going to put my scrap paper here. So just hold this. And get some on the edges and on your leaves. I try not to get my pumpkins. If you do, it's not the end of the world. And you don't want to try to get your words because it might smear them. And now we have two colors of speckles. And we have some speckles on our leaves. And there you go. There's some fun words for the inside too. Um... But I'm not going to add those. And so our final thing is to add some embellishments. These are the Perennial Essence um, Floral Centers that are in the annual catalog. And they just remind me of all of the things that are blooming right now in the Midwest. Just all of the little things that cause my allergies. But they're pretty. So let's stick one of these over here. It just adds a little bit of texture. And then we're going to use the Holiday Rhinestone Basics. And these are my free um, thank you gift. So any order over $50 that you place this month on my website, you're going to get a packet of these with your thank you cards. And we're going to use three of the colors. So let's stick one of these here. You're just going to do them random. Let's do one of the blue ones up on the leaf. And this is the same color as the paper. Let's do another red one here. Do a yellow one here because you just can't have too many colors of fall rhinestones, and that's it. You could also um, make this into a something that you frame because that would be pretty. Not make it a card, but frame it. Here's my one from before. I guess it's not mounted too terribly different. So I hope you like that. And there will be up close pictures over on my website if you would like to go check that out and along with all of the specials that I have this month. So have a great night. Bye.